I sat last night um, with Olive and um, we were reading the latest in the She Persisted series. I am such a fan of these books. This one is science. Yes. I want young readers to think, oh my gosh, like I can go off and discover amazing things about um, animals I might not even know yet, like Jane Goodall, or I can have amazing scientific discoveries like Rosalind Franklin. I found so many of the kids that read early versions of She Persisted in Science were actually particularly drawn to Flossie Wong Stahl and to Rosalind Franklin because their work has also helped us understand COVID. Yeah. It has helped in the development of the COVID-19 vaccines. And so I think it also is just great for kids to understand, oh my gosh, these incredible things that women did decades ago are now mattering to, to my life, are now helping to save people's lives today. And I appreciated reading a children's book, which is very much for any age and they're just so illuminating about what women, extraordinary women have done. It's so celebratory, it's so inspirational. So when I was reading the book with um, my children, admittedly in like an earlier version, my son, Aiden, who's five, like was fascinated with Gladys West who helped invent GPS. Yes! And he was like, what? You used to not know where you were going? And I was like, yes. <laughs> Way back when I was your age, we got lost sometimes. Like he couldn't believe that there was a tech. He was like, you didn't have a phone with like a map on it? And I was like, no, I didn't even have a phone. I mean, it was just, I was like, oh my gosh, how much has changed? So much is changing. Now, um, how did you get that resource? How did you get that memo that there was nothing you couldn't do? Or did you feel like that as a kid? You know, my mom and I have talked about kind of this question a lot because when I was growing up in, in Little Rock in Arkansas in the 80s and 90s, you know, I had my mom as a role model. I also um, had most of my teachers and my principals who were women. My pediatrician was a woman. The mayor of Little Rock when I was a kid was a woman. And so I, I just had such a profoundly different um, experience than, than my mom had had when she was growing up um, you know, in, in suburban Chicago where um, the only, most of her teachers were men. The principals were all men. Like the people that she saw in elected office were men. Any doctor or dentist that she interacted with was a man. Like she just had such a different experience than I did a generation later. And so I think Yes, it was the power of my mother's example and my amazing grandmother's examples. And it also was just the world that I was growing up in. And so I do think we have to continue to have affirmative examples of, of, of strong, amazing, persistent women who have done remarkable things in, in many different fields. Because it matters to me as the mom of a, a daughter and two sons that all of them look up to women. It, 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 I think is really exciting for me that I see, you know, in, in my son who's five, um, like if you ask him like what an athlete looks like, he talks about Megan Rapinoe. Like that's what he sees as an athlete, um, partly because he loves her pink hair and admittedly also because he loves soccer and our American women are a little better than our American men at the moment uh, <laughs> on the soccer field. Um, and so I see that it matters because I see it in my own kids. Yep.